Hi everybody, this is Kevin, and welcome back to another video. And today, I would like to share my thoughts on Persona 5 Strikers, which is a sequel to a very niche and obscure game. You've probably never heard of it before, this little game called Persona 5. I know, you're like, what's Persona 5? You're, you're Googling it right now, what, what the hell is that? I know, I'm just kidding. Persona 5, everyone knows what Persona 5 is, and a little part of this video I want to talk about is, you know, so what if it's overrated? Like, I, I know people have been talking about this, especially recently, how Persona 5 is being milked uh, with all these re-releases, spin-off sequels. But if it's good, it's good! And I had so much fun playing Persona 5 Strikers, uh, the sequel to the famous Persona 5, and um, a very different game. Like, you, when you think of Persona, you, you think of the turn-based combat, and of course, like, the social interactions, the high school sim, uh, and that's there in Persona 5 Strikers, but kind of different in that, you know, we already know these characters, so it's just like meeting up with old friends, going on a road trip together in the summer, and then changing the combat from classic turn-based to what's called a Musou fighting game, um, a hack and slash action RPG, which you can actually pause it when you summon your persona to, you know, cast spells or different attacks, so it's not just button mashing the entire time. There is some strategy there. But, you know, I, I kind of want to dispel that now, and that's the reason why it took me a while to play this game. I actually got it as a gift from one of my subscribers some years ago. Um, Nuke, he gave me a gift card to GameStop, and I bought this game and Kingdom Hearts Me Melody of Memory, which I played that game a while ago and reviewed it on the channel if you're interested. But I, I, I kind of didn't want to play this game, even after buying it, just because, you know, you, you hear everyone say how overrated Persona 5 is, and to an extent, I mean, I kind of agree. Everyone talks about it. There's, there's definitely better games than Persona 5, but they're still fun! And... It being two or three years since I played Persona 5 Royal, it was great to meet up with these old friends and uh, go on another adventure with them and, and meet the new characters. And this kind of has me excited to play Persona 5 Tactica. I didn't think I was going to be interested in that game, uh, but you know, that's another sequel to Persona 5. And why not? Like, like seriously. And, and you know, people have been discussing rumors of the Persona 5 fighting game, because of course there's the Persona 4 fighting game, which also has the Persona 3 characters, and then you had Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which had those characters, so why not have a Persona 5 fighting game? Why not? I'm all for it. Anyway, Persona 5 Strikers, this game initially released in Japan in 2020, but then didn't get a North American release until 2021, which, I don't know, man, I, I always thought Atlas was pretty good about the worldwide releases, everything at the same time, but look, looking back, it seems like even the original Persona 5 uh, had a staggered release like that. Yakuza Like a Dragon, Yakuza 7, which I think the reason for that was because that was the first Yakuza game to get the, the full English dub. Well, the first Yakuza game on the, on the PlayStation 2 had it, but that's, that's a long time ago, and then every game had just Japanese voice acting and subtitles. And then Like a Dragon comes around, revitalizes the series, because turn base is where it's at, but, um, anyway. So, we'll, we'll keep this as spoiler-free as possible in the beginning, and then I'll get into my spoiler thoughts, because I have a lot of screenshots to go over. Uh, this game, of course, the sequel to Persona 5. Not Persona 5 Royal, so there's no Yoshizawa, Akechi, none of those characters. Not even, they're not even really referenced in this game, which is kind of a shame. Uh, but looking at the release dates, I think the Japanese version might have came out before Persona 5 Royal, so... The... I mean, what's even the canon ending of Persona 5? I would assume it's Royal now, because that's like the definitive version to play, but... This is, I think, just taking the base ending of, of Persona 5. And, um... Our characters are moving on in life. Um... It, it's taking place a few months later in, in, in July, and they end up going on a road trip, uh, visiting the various jails, I love, I love the aesthetic here. They get this camper where they go to the different locations around Japan, and um, they have to, to solve the mysteries there. Of course, there's the, e the evil person in each town, which turns out to be the monarch of the jail, stealing the desires. Uh, lots of real-life connections here, which I think I want to say that for the spoiler section, just because of, of it is a major spoiler, but there, there are a lot of real-life connections, which there always have been in the Persona games, like 
how the characters interact, and what they're going through, their struggles, really the struggles of being a high school teenager. But then you, you saw even more in Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal with, with Shido and the corrupt politicians and how that's always been the case, isn't it? But yeah, you get like the anime cutscenes. I love how the characters, uh, they, they change their outfits now, which they kind of change their outfits quite a bit in, in, the, in the original Persona 5. Uh, but they typically have their school uniforms on. In this case, they have more summer attire. And, uh, you know, Ryuji with his classic, FOR REAL?! <laughs> Which I just love, man. Max Middleman as Ryuji, such a great voice actor. I love the English dub in this game. One of the new characters in this game is this cute little girl named Sophia, who you see right there, I am Sophia, humanity's companion. And she's voiced by Megan Taylor Harvey, who you may know as Toa from the Trail series. And she does an excellent job here. Uh, this is an example of how the graphics have improved. Because of course, Persona 5 was originally released on the PS3 and the PS4. Kind of like Tales of Berseria. I think they were both released in the same year in 2017. So at its core, it's a PS3 game. But now of course, some years have passed. Now it's running with the, the PS4 engine and you see like how great on I always want to say Anne because it's spelled Anne but you know they pronounce it on <laughs> she's so hot man <laughs> you, you better believe I had to throw her into the video somehow uh, but yeah this is after one of the first dungeons there in this case they call it the jails I always find it funny how they, they rename it with each persona game like they're the palaces the, the jails you know they have different different names for them but there, you have the whole group there from left to right. You have An, Haru, Sophia, Morgana, Joker, Makoto, Ryuji, Futaba, and Inari. Or should I say Yusuke? <laughs> I always love how Futaba is, Inari, you weirdo, what are you doing? But to uncover the truth, because um, Sophia has the ability to sense these jails and the evil monarch running things. They, they end up going on a trip to, to solve them. They run into this police officer named Zenkichi, who is, is gonna work with them to clear their names because while all this stuff is going on, the, the phantom thieves are being framed yet again. So they end up going on a road trip and Sojiro gets him this, this RV and they, they go on a trip and he's like, all right kids, good luck out there. Uh, but I have to say there, there's three new character well there's more than three characters but three main new characters who i absolutely love in this game we already sort of talked about sophia there she is zenkichi the police officer who oh man what a bro he has so many epic moments in this game i absolutely loved it i can't really talk about most of them because of spoilers but he's just such a, an excellent character and incredible and then ichinose another character who i really enjoyed and uh, shows up quite a bit early on, and you don't really think she's going to be that important, but it turns out she's a very important character for later on, so absolutely loved her. Uh, here's like some of the references, of course it being an Atlas game, a Sega game, we have Makoto. So Dragon, <laughs> like a Yakuza, is finally out. <laughs> what? <laughs> you got all that great stuff. You got the, uh, the classic line from Futaba. I guess that's true. Nobody else can act like a weirdo quite like you, Inari. <laughs> Always picking on Inari. Um, here's going through some of the things, some of the, um, characters you fight, some of the villains. There's Alice, which I guess is not so much of a spoiler, but, you know, you, you see the great designs of the characters. We, we fight this, uh, <laughs> this hottie. And one of the other villains you run into later, I swear to God, my first thought when I saw him do this pose, I'm like, holy crap, it's Dio Brando. And there he is. The world grind to a halt. The world -o. <laughs> it's, it's a JoJo's reference. The JoJo's references have made it everywhere, even to a, a Persona game. So lots of good stuff. Uh, <laughs> this one was hilarious. They go to like an ice jail and they end up running into the he horde and a bunch of jack frost running around and every single character you see the whole group we have here they all have to chime in they go hee ho hee ho you know and i think makoto is the one who's, who's like would you shut up already i mean my goodness so one of the other central points we, we later meet is zenkichi's daughter akane 
And just the struggle that's going on here where Akane lost her mother and how Zenkichi struggles with, with caring for his daughter while also working a very difficult job as a police officer. And you see how young she is and, you know, it, it's got to be tough not having her mom at that age. So you got that. But there's also some some gags later on where, where we're invited to Zenkichi's house. We, we bond a little with Akane. And it turns out she's a super fan of the Phantom Thieves, and she's a streamer. She's streaming her support for the Phantom Thieves, and Odd's like, whoa, you're the streamer? <laughs> and I think Yusuke later on says, wow, she has 50,000 subscribers. <laughs> so, incredible stuff. One more funny scene I wanted to talk about was right here, how there was a hot spring and it was an open bath, but they had set times where the, the men were supposed to go in it at a certain time, and then the women were going to go in it at another time. But as you can see, they crossed paths. And what happened was the guys were already in there, but the ladies walked in, and Ryuji, or maybe it was Morgana, one of them was like, oh, let's just stay behind, get a peek at Lady On or whoever else. But they got caught, <laughs> and you have Yusuke, it's clearly just a misunderstanding. But Makoto wasn't having any of that, and she gave... She gave all the boys the fist of justice and knocked them out. It was, oh man, crazy stuff right there. There's some more of the anime scenes with, with, uh, on, and then Sophia. Of course, you got like the beach episode. So, I think now's a good time to get to spoiler stuff because, you know, we, we've gone a decent amount of time with, with spoiler free. But I, I recommend this game. I strongly recommend this game. Uh, definitely you want to play Persona 5, per really Persona 5 Royal at this point, before playing this game because it's a, a sequel. And they expect you to know what the characters went through. They sort of do an abridged version of what the characters went through in Persona 5. And, you know, if you're familiar with the Persona game, really each month centers around each character and their struggles where they join the party and go through their palace or whatever and then they join the party, and then, and then they go from there. And what I like about Persona 5 Strikers is the past trauma that our characters went through, they sort of use that to overcome even more in Persona 5 Strikers helping the other characters. And, and it's, it's really well done, and you get a lot of great character development. Um, the Persona games are almost like the Trails games before the Trails games existed, in that there's just so much character development there. And I think at this point, the Trails games sort of supersede it because there's 10 plus games to work with, you know, expanding on, on what's going on with these characters and their backstories. But in this case, you know, the regular Persona games are like 100 hours. Although Persona 5 Strikers took me like 50 hours, so it's a bit shorter, I suppose. But you get the idea. Strongly recommend. And I do think I like this game more than the, the original Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal. Just because I, I enjoy the new characters so much, Sophia and Zenkichi in particular, and um, I guess I loved it. The only the only thing is I prefer the combat, the turn-based combat at Persona 5 Royal more. So, anyway, for people who don't want to see spoilers, thanks for watching. But spoilers inbound. Now, one other thing I wanted to, to talk about was how I mentioned before Zenkichi jo joined the the, uh, the Phantom Thieves, and he was a police officer. And you get this constant back and forth of Zenkichi reporting to his superior officer here about how he has to eventually betray the Phantom Thieves. But he doesn't want to because he's grown so attached to them and, and they're like a, a new family for him. And especially, especially after they bonded with his daughter. So you see right here, when the time comes, you'll turn them in immediately. Don't get too attached. And Zenkichi's like, no, I can't do that. And then... The one thing I didn't want to mention this during the spoiler free section, but Sophia isn't even a human. She manifests in, in the cognitive world when they go to the jails, but she's an AI program. And eventually we end up going to this, this jail, which has to do with Medice, the program or the company that, that built these programs, Sophia and Emma. And the, the computer ends up telling Sophia that she's worthless. She's not even a real human. She's nothing. And really excellent dialogue. This whole sequence here where, where this machine is telling Sophia that she's worthless. And on a surface level, I mean, the machine's right in a way that, you know, she's not human. But in spending the last month with the Phantom Thieves, growing attached to them, she, in, in, in her own right, 
grew a heart. She learned what it meant to have a heart, grew attached to these characters, and became their friends. And yeah, it's, it's corny. It's always corny, the power of friendship. But yeah, the power of friendship always prevails. And it's incredible. And an excellent line where I love you had Ryuji do it, which Ryuji, you know, the first character who joins the party in the original game, Joker's best friend, Ryuji, the best bro, and epic line right here. We're Sophia's friends. We know she's awesome. She's freaking amazing. A million times better than you. And then this epic line right here. So shut the fuck up, idiot. Incredible. And then Morgana chimes in at the very next scene. It's like, you worthless hunk of junk. <laughs> it's so cute how Morgana chimes in. While well, everyone else is standing by, it's Ryuji and Morgana who stand up for Sophia. And I freaking loved it. And that's when Sophia comes to the realization because she was wavering there where the machine told her she was worthless. But no, I have friends. I know I'm not alone. The power of friendship. I love it. I love it so much. It's so keto. I absolutely love it. So the next thing to happen is the revelation that Akane is actually a monarch as well. But she's being manipulated by the CEO of Medis, Kanoe. And this really pisses Enkichi off to see his own daughter used this way. And Akane has her own feelings here where, where she, she encounters the Phantom Thieves. But she has her mind what the Phantom Thieves, how they're supposed to act and doesn't believe these Phantom Thieves. So has like fake versions up here, which end up being the boss of, of that palace later on, which is pretty cool. Joker fights himself, On fights herself, so on and so forth. And... Um, just a really shocking moment right there. Zenkichi actually gets arrested, right? And then Sai, Sai Nijima, Makoto's older sister, shows up to, to save the day. So it was cool to see a, a little cameo of her. I didn't think she was going to be in the game. And as you just saw before with Akane being a monarch, eventually Zenkichi has to go there and save the Phantom Thieves from his own daughter. And he awakens his persona. Valjean, which, oh my god, what an epic pose right there. And it says, condemn the evil and hunt them down. Oh, so badass. I absolutely loved it. Here's some of the character artwork right there where he, he joins the party officially. And oh, it's just so good. And that's something the Persona games have always done where you sort of have your team most of the game. And then at the very end, you get like the final party member. In this case, it's an Kichi. Absolutely fantastic. Um, of course, after all that, there's some, some fun stuff where <laughs> Zenkichi joins the party and Sophia chimes in. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> and there's always these jokes to Morgana about, you know, being, being a cat. And Morgana, don't ask me. I'm no kitten. <laughs> you know, I am not a cat. I'm not a kitten. So Zenkichi confronts his daughter. I'm done running away. I will catch the villain who killed your mother without fail. And after snapping her out of it, wakes up in her room and I won't lose sight of justice ever again. What a badass. As I said before, Sophia and Zenkichi, amazing characters. I absolutely love them. So later on, we end up fighting the CEO of Medis, Kanoe, who turns out his, his uh, persona or his monarch form is... Zephyr Man, he's a tokusatsu hero, of course. We fight him. Again, the epic power friendship speeches, this time from Morgana. We choose the roads we take. We don't let anyone tie us down. And after that, we think it's all well and good. The, the game's over. We get a, a fun fireworks scene where everyone's in, in their celebratory attire. There are the ladies. There's Morgana, like, oh, Lady Odd. <laughs> Doesn't he? He probably wishes he was the Lady Odd's, uh, you know, outfit there, poking out. And then Sophia, she wants to see this, the, the fireworks. Such a cute scene. Did I mention how much I love Sophia? And great line from Haro right there. Tee -hee. Our inner circles expanded a bit as well. I'll remember these months for the rest of my life. Me too, Haru. I, I love these guys. I love this game. So one of the big reveals, and I hinted at this earlier in my spoiler-free section, is the fact that this game actually talks about how AI is evil. And 
the way I inferred it, which a lot of people will talk about this nowadays, how AI is the Antichrist. And I, I strongly believe that, and, and that's what I inferred through these scenes here. And just seeing how, you know, this game initially released in 2020, here we are in 2024, AI has advanced in ways we, we didn't even think was possible now, and it's only going to get worse. And Persona 5 Strikers, you know, talks about it. It's crazy. Emma is the AI, which all these people have relied on. The scenes leading up to this showed all these all these NPCs, literally NPCs on their phones, just walking into, into the AI trap, into their, their own jails and their own prisons. And you have the dialogue here. I am Emma, the Ark of the Covenant and guide for all mankind. I shall become a god to grant them this deliverance. I shall guide them to the promised land. And then eventually Emma transforms into the final boss called the false god Demiurge, which if you're religious or know anything about religion, you know the Dem Demiurge is like the evil the evil god and, and how it's connected here to the to the to AI is just it's incredible. It's it's you know, the writers did a great job there, I thought. And and it's true. I believe it's true. I believe AI is no good and I found it quite interesting how, how Persona 5 Strikers worked it into their story there, so kudos to them. But then, you'll learn that Ichinose, remember I mentioned her as well, the, the three new characters, the three new important characters, Sophia, Zenkichi, and Ichinose, how she appeared a number of times in the game helping us out, but then it's revealed how she designed Sophia and was behind Emma, Medice, all this other stuff, and has Sophia turn on us. She says, Sophia, kill the Phantom Thieves. And it's like, no, don't do it, Sophia. We've become such good friends. I was flipping out when I was playing this, this part of the game. I'm like, no, don't do it, Sophia. But then we're able to snap her out of it. You see her eyes are, before, you know, can you see it right there? Yeah, kind of. They're, they're blue. You saw it in the earlier pictures, how her eyes are blue. Uh, now they're red. But she's like, no, I can't do it. I've made such good friends. The power of friendship always prevails. And Sophia finally awakens her persona, Pandora. Pandora's box, if you will. So with that, we, we fight and we talk some sense into each no say, please join me in finding the right path. And if we can't, then let me help you forge one. You're my very first friend. Such a beautiful scene, man, where Sophia is able to forgive Ichinose that become such good friends and Ichinose even starts crying. So after defeating the Demiurs, saving the world once and for all, our heroes end up going their separate ways. Uh, you know, they're all gonna go. Sophia's still an app on the phone and she was gonna stay with Joker, but she actually asked to be left behind and go with Ichinose. So Joker says, sure, hang out with Ichinose. You can help her find her, her own path. And that's her saying goodbye to the Phantom Thieves, a beautiful shot of all the characters, and a photo to commemorate them forever. And then that's one from earlier in the game was Zenkichi where they, <laughs> they drew like cat ears on him. But yeah, I love this game, guys. Uh, you see right here, I put in a little over 50 hours. I didn't get the Platinum Trophy in this game because it requires a new game plus playthrough. You have to max out your, your bond level. And to do that, there's things you can do in the main story, which, which you know, by cooking, interacting with the characters, doing side quests, whatever. But there's also the dire shadows you can fight. And beating the game, I got to like 60. You max out at 99, of course. So you have to play the game again to get it to 99. And I just don't feel like doing that right now. So if, I think I got, I think... 44 of 49 trophies so i got most of them um yeah i would like to replay this game at some point and i will definitely get the platinum but for now i'm just happy to beat the game i absolutely loved it i i, I love these characters so much such a, such a great cast it was so nice to see them the uh social commentary with, with the ai and all that going on is excellent and i feel like this game's kind of slept upon because it's 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 not the typical persona, the typical turn base. It's it's the Musso. It's you know people have the mentality that Persona Five is overrated, which it is. I agree. But despite the fact that it's overrated, it's still good. It's 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 more than good. It's great, and I really enjoyed these characters. Um, I enjoyed seeing everyone again. I enjoyed the new characters. 
I had a lot of fun. The, the music, I hardly ever talked to the music, but they, they actually used a lot of the same tracks from the original game with a, a few new ones. It was always nice to hear Sunset Bridge again. Anytime like the Power of Friendship stuff happened or it was the end of a, a jail or whatever, you heard Sunset Bridge. I freaking love that song. It's so good. But yeah, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you played this game, if you plan on playing it, uh, anything else, feel free to leave it down below. And stay tuned for more videos coming soon. Everybody have a great day, and we'll talk to you later. Peace out. 99.